Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm decluttering my fragrance collection. I have 25 fragrances on the chopping block, so we're gonna go through and talk about each one. I recently shared my entire perfume collection. I currently have 135 full-size bottles and then 20 travel sprays and roller balls. As I was filming that video, it gave me the chance to see all of the perfumes that had been shoved to the back, forgotten about, the ones that I've held on to for a really long time but I never wear. Some of these I like but I don't really love. So it was just the perfect time to do a much needed deep clean. My personal goal for my fragrance collection, it's kind of the same as my makeup collection really, I just want best of the best. Doesn't matter if it's more expensive or affordable, designer, niche, obscure brand nobody really talks about. I just want all of my fragrances to smell incredible. So today's declutter brings me one step closer to that goal and it also frees up some space. That way I have room to introduce new fragrances that I will love and I will wear. It's not easy letting fragrances go. I'm not sure why it's so much more difficult to let go of fragrances versus makeup. And that's my next project. I'm desperate to do a massive makeup declutter, go through everything and organize the vanity behind me. So that will be my next major project. It will probably take me a couple days to go through everything. Something about January puts me in the cleaning mood. I think some of these fragrances are going to surprise you guys. So the first one I have here is Tom Ford Black Orchid, the Eau de Toilette. This is such a classic fragrance and I still really like this perfume, but I've had it for a while now and I just never really wear this. See, here's the problem. As soon as I go through and I start to smell these fragrances, as long as it's not something that I hate or I just dislike it, I'm always tempted to add it back to the collection. I used to wear it, but now I think my collection has just grown to a point where it's so big, I have so many different options, that I tend to just grab what's new, what's exciting. And so a lot of my classic fragrances kind of get left behind. It's sad. It is so moody, it is so sexy, and really perfect for date night, fall, winter. And there's a creaminess and a sweetness. It's such an elegant perfume. See, now I'm torn. Should I give her another chance? I'm just not so sure. The problem is I just never grab it and I don't think I will grab it in the future. It's not like one of those fragrances where I think, oh my goodness, I forgot about that. I need to move it closer to the front or bump it somewhere where it's in line sight because I will definitely grab that. I know even as much as I love this fragrance, I won't grab it. There is a little bit left. I mean, I got a lot of use out of this. As I said, I've had it for a while now and I was wearing it pretty regularly when I first got the bottle. Because it's so classic, I may hold on to the bottle just in case I want to reference it or talk about it in a future video, maybe compare it with another Tom Ford fragrance. So I will probably hold on to it, but just separate it from my main collection. That way it's not really in the way or adding to the clutter. I can find somewhere else in this room to store the bottle. I'm also getting rid of my Chanel Coco Eau de Toilette. I know, shocking. But here is why. I really miss my original Coco Eau de Parfum. I know I've told the story a bunch of times, but years ago I had the original Coco and I accidentally dropped it on the bathroom floor. It shattered into a million pieces. It's kind of nice that it's the Eau de Toilette. It's a little bit lighter. You could wear this daytime, but do I wear it daytime? I don't. I think it would smell beautiful on somebody else, but there are just other fragrances that I always consistently grab over this. I haven't even made a significant dent in it, and I've had it for a few years, but it's not old. It's not bad. I could hold on to this. Maybe I should hold on to it. I may do the same thing as the Tom Ford fragrance and maybe just kind of separate it from my main collection. I'm sticking with designer fragrances first. Carolina Herrera Good Girl is another perfume that I really like, but I just never really wear. Now I do think part of the reason is because this has been down at the bottom, shoved to the back, kind of out of sight, out of mind. So of course I wouldn't grab this fragrance. and didn't even remember truly that it was in my collection. Now when I smell it, that's when I start to get into trouble because it does smell really good. It's a beautiful perfume. It's very elegant. It's a little bit sweet, but very sensual. I could see myself wearing this 
But when I imagine the occasion, I know there are other fragrances in my collection that I would most likely grab before I grab this one. I was so sure that I wanted to get rid of this before I sat down to film, and now I'm not so sure. Because maybe it's just that it's been a really long time since I've worn it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear this for the next couple of days, wear it out and about, and see how it makes me feel. And then I can make a decision and I will know for sure that I'm making the right decision. I don't want to rush it. Next, I have this little bottle of Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet, but this is not as serious as it may sound because I would not voluntarily just give up this Dior fragrance. It's one of my favorites, but here you can see I have this much larger bottle. So I was going back and forth between the two, but I figure I do love this fragrance. I might as well keep this larger bottle. This is the... 3.4 fluid ounce bottle of Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet. This is the identical fragrance, but this came in the little Dior Beauty Ritual gift set that I picked up last year. And I ended up keeping it, and so I have the lip glow and I have the little rose hand cream in my purse. And as much as I would love to keep this little fragrance and maybe I could use it for travel, these bottles are so cute. I mean, the bottle's beautiful. I have so many amazing girlfriends that I will probably just gift this to somebody and that way they can use it and love the fragrance as well. Seems redundant to hold on to both of these, especially since I also have the new Miss Dior. So even though I'm decluttering this small bottle, I'm not truly getting rid of it from my collection, I'm just gonna gift this to a friend. I have two fragrances here from Ellis Brooklyn, Super Amber and Sweet. I like these fragrances, I don't love them. And I wish I did because I love the brand, the fact that they try to use really natural ingredients and it's a clean fragrance brand. I think that is so admirable. I wish there was a fragrance that I loved so I could support. I'm being very nitpicky. These are not bad fragrances. They just don't really work on me. Now, Super Amber is incredibly light. Even when you first spray the fragrance, I think when I did my initial unboxing, I couldn't smell it at all. I had tried this right after Invite Only from Kaoli, which is very spicy and potent, but even now, you really have to stick your nose right next to the blotter. And it's pretty. It's such a shame because it's a pretty perfume. The scent that I can pick up on is so nice. I just wish it was stronger. I wish I could really smell the fragrance. You're certainly not going to smell good when you walk into the room when you're wearing this because I don't think anybody would be able to smell it on you. And I know everybody has different preferences with fragrance. Some people want something that sits really close to the skin. They don't want a fragrance that is too bold. If you're really sensitive to perfume and perfumes tend to give you a headache, this would be a great line to check out. Does not smell like amber. When I hear the name Super Amber, I think of like an Amber Nuit from Dior, something that's spicy and warm and like a deep Super Amber. There is nothing super about this perfume. It's super light. It's super hard to detect. <laughs> it's very hard to smell. And then we have Sweet, and both of these fragrances were sent to me complimentary in PR, by the way. Doesn't change my opinion on them. I think Sweet was my favorite Ellis Brooklyn fragrance that I would tried. It's really nice. I could see somebody really liking this perfume. It's a very light gourmand. It kind of smells sugary sweet, a little bit creamy. It's kind of a cotton candy cloud. I think it's a little bit too simple for my taste. I like it, but I, I just know myself and I wouldn't wear it. If I'm gonna wear something that is really sweet, and I don't mind a sweet perfume, but I need there to be some other element. It has to give me something more than just a sugar rush. This is a sugar rush. The more I sit here with this water card, I'm wondering if I jumped the gun and I rushed to judgment on this perfume. This is one that I may do the same test as Good Girl from Carolina Herrera. I'm gonna wear this for a couple days. I'm gonna wear it on my skin, out and about, and see how it makes me feel. I might change my mind on this one. I still don't think it comes close to my favorites or some of the best fragrances in my collection, but I don't think it's that different from maybe some of the Kaoli fragrances like the Musk, the Citrus. 
I like them enough to hold on to them, but I will most likely only use them if I'm layering. I think that could be the case with Sweet. This next perfume has to be my greatest disappointment in 2021 because I had heard so many incredible things, just rave reviews about it. And now I would consider this to be one of the most overrated, overhyped fragrances. It's from Amouage, this is Blossom Love. I love the bottle, looks so cute. I love Cherry Blossom. When I read the notes, I thought, wow. How did I not know about this fragrance? Of course I want to try it for myself. I just can't really get into it, not at all. And I've worn it a couple times. I mean, I feel like I have given this fragrance so many chances. I've really tried hard to make it work and that just should never be the case. I think if you really have to work hard to like a fragrance, you should probably just accept the fact that you don't like it and I have finally accepted that fact. It's very green right away, and I just can never quite get past that green note. It's very harsh. And when I smell it, it's almost as if I can smell the fragrance I had hoped for in the background, but there's like a wall that's blocking me from getting to the good stuff. But even once I let it dry down on the skin, it's not like you just have to wait a few minutes and then it's really good. Even once I wait, I never really get what I'm looking for. I've heard a lot of people say this is one of their most complimented fragrances, one of the best performing, longest lasting perfumes in their collection. So it really is kind of a shame that it didn't work for me, but I've just accepted the fact that she needs a new home. It's funny to me how after revisiting some of these fragrances, my opinion has softened and I'm kind of tempted to keep them, but that was not the case with Blossom Love. Next is Ouverture from Zerjoff. I went back and forth between Ouverture and Italica. They're very different. I'm not saying they're the same, but I do sort of feel like they're similar enough that I would wear them for the same occasion. They do sort of have a similar dry down, similar notes. I just don't really feel the need to keep both in my collection. And I think of the two, Italica shows a bit more promise. I think it was disappointing as a blind buy because kind of blossom love syndrome. It had been built up so much that I was expecting to just love it and melt as soon as I sprayed it on the blotter and that wasn't the case. Ouverture is a very particular fragrance. This is not an easy grab and go. I would never just pick this up and spray it and run out the door. It would have to be a very particular occasion, the right outfit, the right makeup look. It would be very planned and orchestrated for me to wear this fragrance. And I really like it. That's not the problem. I think it's just that I like smelling it more than I like wearing it. Has that ever happened to you? It, this has happened to me before where there are fragrances that I think, wow, that smells really good, but would I want to wear it? Would I actually want to wear it? Because I think sometimes we trick ourselves and we're like, oh, I, I really like it. Of course I would wear it, but then you don't. Those are the fragrances that a year, two years, three years goes by and you're like, why did I buy that? <laughs> I never wear it. And that's kind of the case with Ouverture. I do think it is best for fall, winter. It's a very warm and cozy kind of gourmand, very milky fragrance. So I don't necessarily live in the right climate. There aren't going to be a lot of occasions where this would be appropriate for me. It smells very edible, a little bit chocolatey, fruity, creamy, a little sweet. I think this is one that I might gift my husband. It's a unisex and I think this is one that is perfectly on the fence. It could go either way. If I wore this out, I would not feel like I was wearing a men's cologne, but on a man, I think it would suit him as well. Next on the chopping block is Scandal from Roja. And I know this will probably come as a surprise because I've raved so much about all of the other fragrances in this line and I stand behind those rave reviews. I love all of the other perfumes from this particular collection that I have. And Scandal is really beautiful. It's a gorgeous, light floral fragrance. The problem is I just haven't really gotten a lot of use out of this. And when I want to wear a light floral perfume, I think there are so many others that I would probably grab instead over this one. It's really not a bad perfume. It's a very light, 
green crispy floral. I don't typically love anything that's super green. I find it to be a little bit harsh and it gives it more of a bitter quality and that's kind of how I feel about Scandal. And here's the test that tells me that I'm making the right decision. If I imagine I'm in a department store and I'm shopping for new fragrances and somebody blindfolds me, if I smell this, I just know it's not right for me. If I had no idea what brand this came from, that it was a very expensive, luxurious, niche fragrance house, if I didn't see the bottle and know that it was part of this incredible collection, I would not pick this fragrance. Fantasia Veneta from Bulgari was one of my favorite new launches in 2020. This launched during spring and even then I said this is more of a fall winter fragrance because it's a little bit spicy and it's meant to be a fun festive kind of party fragrance and I think it is and it's beautiful. I really like it. It has some of my favorite notes. Rose, vanilla, musk, patchouli. It reminds me so much of Portrait of a Lady which I don't have in my collection but I think I would like to add it to my collection. That's one of those kind of classic niche fragrances that everybody talks about. I certainly wouldn't have need for both of them. Another perfume that I still really like, but it's just run its course, is Killian After Sunset. I picked this up a while ago, and I remember I've told the story so many times, but I received this as a sample in a Sephora order, sprayed it on my arm, initially hated it immediately threw out the sample and I tried to scrub my arm. But as the fragrance dried down, I just fell in love. So much so that I went ahead and I purchased the bottle, but it, there's something that's really addicting about this perfume, but you have to wait. And sometimes you have to wait five to 10 minutes. It's not something that happens after a few minutes. You really have to give this fragrance time. It smells like a very basic floral initially. Not bad. But not really great either. Slowly but surely the magic starts to happen and then it gets really yummy. But I just hate the fact that you have to wait so long for it to dry down before you it actually smells good. Commodity Gold was one of my favorite new discoveries in 2021 but here I have the bold version. So this is Commodity Gold Bold. I also have the personal and the expressive. Both of those are amazing. I will continue to get lots of use out of them. The bold is a little bit too spicy. It doesn't feel like just a different concentration. The notes are definitely tweaked so it smells like three entirely different fragrances, which is a good thing. That way you could technically purchase all three and wear them to different occasions if you wanted to. I'm gonna gift this to my husband. I think he will really like this. I think the Commodity Gold Expressive has that vanilla touch of sweetness. I think it's a little bit more feminine. This bold is just a little bit too spicy. I think this leans very masculine, which is why I personally would not wear this. If I wore the bold, I would have to layer it with something else. This Lake and Sky Midnight 07 Eau de Parfum was sent over complimentary. And I had never tried anything from the brand, I pick up on a lot of very heavy sandalwood. I didn't even look up the fragrance, I don't think, because I sprayed it and I just knew it wasn't right for me. So this I'm gonna try to gift to my husband. They also sent over this 1111 fragrance and I think this is one of their best sellers and I thought that was a really cute name. So this one is a rollerball. This is a little bit more light and fresh kind of zesty, a little bit citrusy, but it reminds me a lot of a cologne. I could see this being unisex, but whenever I wore this the other day, just to kind of test it out and see if maybe I could wear it, I didn't love it on me. I kept feeling like I smelled like I had sprayed cologne on. I have three other full-size bottles, two ancillaries, and then a handful of travel sprays and rollerballs left. This was sent over complimentary from Moroccan Oil. It's their fragrance mist for hair and body. I think they launched this sometime in 2021, which is very exciting. I think it's kind of cool for the brand to venture out from hair. I really like the smell of Moroccan Oil products. I use Moroccan Oil products, but I like them in my hair. I don't necessarily want to wear that as my fragrance du jour. So what I will probably do is maybe just move this to the bathroom and use it as a hair mist. I guess you could maybe use this as a pillow mist. 
I could see this as a linen spray. It's very light. I mean, you can tell just by the mister. You're going to get a lot of, of fragrance. It's a body splash. It's very nice and fresh, very summery. I could see maybe spraying this all over your body when you get out of the shower. It reminds me a little bit of a beach vacation. So it's very casual. I think if you like something that's just a body splash, a hair mist, you'll probably really like this. I thought I decluttered this the last time around, which it's been a while, but it snuck back into my collection. And see, that's what happens when I second guess myself, when I know I should get rid of a fragrance, go ahead and declutter. And then I chicken out and I just put it back with my collection. I end up just decluttering it the next time around. So this is from Etat Libra de Orange. It's Yes I Do. And the full title it says, Don't Get Me Wrong Baby, Yes I Do. It's a very pretty floral fragrance. I could see this as maybe a mother of the bride scent. It's just not very young, fresh, modern. Just smells like an older, more mature, dated white floral. I'm going to stand my ground this time and actually declutter. Next, I pulled aside my Atelier Cologne Lemon Island. I picked this up from one of the Sephora sampler sets. It smells like suntan lotion. It immediately makes me think of the beach. This is beach vacation fragrance. But now, I don't know why, all I can smell is suntan lotion. I could maybe put this in the bathroom or maybe with my travel stuff because I could see myself grabbing this fragrance if we're headed to the Keys for the weekend or, or some sort of little weekend trip. I think it's a pretty fragrance to wear. Is it a standout? Is it a knockout fragrance? No, it's not. The two ancillaries I have here are the Tom Ford Soli Blanc Shimmering Body Oil. I think this is another one that I've tried to declutter and then it ends up getting put back in my collection. I still never use it, so this time I'm gonna stick to my guns. I picked this up in Nashville and I don't even think it was like right before we moved. So this is probably close to five years old, which isn't terrible, you know, fragrances can last a really long time but it just looks old. And this is the Nest Seville Orange, Seville Orange Perfume Oil. I really like the Turkish Rose and the Madagascar Vanilla. Those are perfume oils that I love and I wear. This one I don't really use. I just don't really feel the need to layer orange into any of my fragrances. And then the very last fragrances I'm decluttering today are these six travel sprays and roller balls. So here I have Juliet Has a Gun, Mmm, I really like this perfume. It's a very sweet gourmand, reminds me a lot of Dior Hypnotic Poison. I don't really grab this that often. It's not something that I would really choose to wear anymore. I like it. This was a bit of an impulse buy. I'm still glad that I purchased it because now I know with certainty that I definitely don't want to invest in a larger size, but it's just not one of my favorites. It's a pretty fragrance, but not a huge standout in my collection. And then these are from Clean Reserve. These were sent to me complimentary. This is Lush Fleur and Aqua Neroli. I'm not a huge Neroli fan, so no surprises here. I like it, it's pretty, but there are just other fragrances from the line I prefer. And then this Lush Fleur, it's, it's nice. It's a pretty light floral fragrance, but when I'm going for a floral, there are probably 20 or 30 fragrances behind me that I'm going to grab every time over this one. This is Gucci Flora Gorgeous Gardenia, the Eau de Toilette. I have the new Gucci Gorgeous Gardenia Eau de Parfum. I like that so much better than this one. This is Maison Louis Marie number no. 4, Bois de Balancourt. I think I'm about halfway through this fragrance. It's very pretty, light, very woodsy fall winter type of perfume. I don't see myself finishing this, so I might as well declutter now. And then here I have a little travel spray of Burberry Her, and I have a full size bottle, so I could keep this for travel, but I think I have other travel sprays of fragrances that I would use. I'm not sure I would get a lot of use out of this. Also, it's a roller ball. If I'm getting a travel spray, I want it to be a true spray. 
like the Tom Ford atomizers. And since I have the full size bottle, I still feel like I have the fragrance in my collection. I'm just going to gift this to somebody. I must have gone through the collection behind me five, six, seven times just looking for fragrances that I could declutter. And not because I'm trying to cut my collection down or cut it in half or anything really dramatic, but I want to be so mindful and so careful about all of the fragrances that I decide to keep. I don't want anything just sitting in the corner, collecting dust, never getting use, not serving a purpose. So I feel good about what I'm keeping. I feel really good about what I'm letting go of. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.